Um, breast cancer is the most common cancer diagnosed in Canadian women in their 40s. It's also the leading cause of death for women in their 40s. You just think about that for a second and let that land. So people are perplexed that last week the Canadian Task Force on Preventive Health Care came out with the guideline for primary health care providers and said, despite calls to lower the age for routine, routine breast cancer screening to 40, they are going to maintain the current advice that routine breast cancer screening start at the age of 50 and end after the age of 74. Here to talk about it is Jenny Dale, co-founder and executive director of Dense Breast Canada. Thank you very much for joining me. Really appreciate your time. Um, oh, thank you, Kelly. This isn't great news um, when it comes to advocating for women. What was your first reaction when you heard that they were not going to lower the guideline for routine screening? Well, I can tell you how strongly we feel that these guidelines are harmful, they're dangerous, and they will continue to put Canadian women's lives at risk. So I'm angry, and you'll probably hear that in my voice throughout. That was the first reaction, and it's not just my reaction. It's Canadian breast cancer screening experts. It's the Canadian Cancer Society, and the good news is that it's also the federal health minister, Mark Holland, who is extremely disappointed and concerned about these guidelines, and is going to take action. And when he says he's going to take action, what can Mark Holland do uh, when it comes to changing the guidelines or uh, taking action? Because I know that anything that deals with um, you know, any kind of medical uh, procedures, that's a provincial matter. It is, but these are federal guidelines. It's actually, it's an independent arm's length body, but it's overseen by the Public Health Agency of Canada. And he ultimately is responsible. Somebody has to take accountability. And he has, you know, a um, multi-step plan on how to address his concerns here. There's going to be external reviews into the science, into the process. And we're going to keep the faith that these guidelines are going to be suspended and Guidelines based on current science will be implemented instead. For people, it's going to take time. There will be a consultation process, and you know the public is invited to also offer their feedback on it. Jenny, for people listening, can you tell us why uh, the task force decided? Did, did, like, did they give a reason for not lowering the breast cancer cancer screening age to forty? Well, there's many reasons why, but the main one is they feel that the harms outweigh the benefits. And you have to remember, there are no breast cancer screening experts on this panel. These guidelines were made by a kidney doctor, a gastroenterologist, an emergency room doctor, a pediatrician, some family doctors, and some nurse practitioners. Breast cancer experts, not on the panel, breast cancer experts, not allowed to vote. They did consult with some, but... You know, on the evidence review, uh, they included breast cancer experts that we collaborate with, and we know that their expert input was not heeded. So that's the number one reason. Without experts, you know, you, they don't have the knowledge. And another major reason is they continue to focus on studies that were from the 60s to the 80s. Wow. And these studies undervalued the benefit of screening, and they're not relevant. The studies, the technology... They're not relevant, you know, 60s to the 80s. What are we using from the 60s to the 80s today? And so as a result, because they're using those outdated studies, they end up overestimating the harms of what they call false positives, what they call overdiagnosis, and underestimating the benefits of the reduction of deaths. And the other reason, which we don't have time to get into very much, but they have an ideology and they believe that we don't need screening, that we have treatment. And so they don't really believe But it. early so detection, detection when it comes to any kind of cancer is key. Absolutely. And when it comes to breast cancer, it's critical because there is no cure for breast cancer. So early detection saves lives. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but it improves the quality of life. So when you have a mammogram, it can pick up cancer two to three years before cancer can be felt. Once you feel a lump or have another symptom, that's usually stage two and above. So you want to catch it. Mammogram can catch it at stage zero, stage one. That means you have the potential to avoid chemo, mastectomy, all the harsh treatments, surgeries. You can avoid potential lymphedema and all the trauma, the emotional, the financial, the PTSD, everything by finding it early. So, you know, it's not, you know, there will be some critics that say that 
finding it early doesn't mean it's not going to come back eventually. And that's true. We've seen that with Olivia Newton-John and others. We're never out of the clear with breast cancer. But I can tell you as a stage one survivor Mm -hmm. that it is a huge difference to not have to go through chemo and face everything that, you know, I could talk to hundreds of women across the country and the repercussions of a later stage diagnosis are so significant. We just don't hear enough about the suffering that these women are going through. We're talking with Jenny Dale, co-founder and executive director of Dense Breast Canada. And, you know, when you uh, talk about financial uh, repercussions, it's it's not just for the patient. This is going to save tax dollars, you know, taxpayers a lot of money. Because when you talk about all the things that cancer patients have to go through that are paid for through our medical system, that's a lot of money. There's potential not just to save lives, but to save a lot of money. Uh, I, exactly. I I can yeah. see why you'd be all um, whipped up into a lather about this because this is people's lives we're playing with here, and I think yeah. it's really important that we uh, that that come across. Um, before can I speak to that financial for one moment, yes, please. Yeah, because there have been studies done recently by the breast cancer screening experts we work with, and they have shown that finding cancer early saves the system unbelievable amounts of money. So treating a stage four breast cancer patient, one stage four patient can cost up to half a million dollars versus treating a stage one patient, which can cost potentially 35,000. So there's huge savings there. And then they did a second study, which shows in Canada, if you start screening at 40, you can save around $450 million annually. So huge, huge savings. Mm -hmm. You know, we have an overburdened system, so we can save lives and we can save money. It's a no brainer. Let me ask you this. Uh, the task force said that they refrain from lowering the age for routine screening from 50 to 40. Um, but that, that women aged 40 to 49 will be eligible for mammograms every two to three years if they want one. Um, uh, just from a conversation with their healthcare provider, uh, 2.2 million of us do not have a healthcare provider or a doctor. Can you speak to how hard it would be to advocate for yourself um, at a walk-in clinic that you need a mammogram? Well, it's the only option women have without a family doctor. I haven't heard of anyone who's been refused at a walk-in clinic, but having a family doctor is no guarantee you're going to be able to get a mammogram. I have certainly heard of many women being dismissed by family doctors and not getting that requisition. So there's also, uh, I just want to bring up, there's a program in Ottawa that we'd like to see expanded that is for residents of Ottawa and Cornwall area where they have a super screener, a nurse practitioner, and patients without a family doctor and get the requisitions they need for screening. And she also performs a risk assessment, which is extremely, extremely important because the problem, one of the main problems with these guidelines and the tool that they give to family doctors to use is that it's a one-size-fits-all so they're not recognizing the risk of dense breasts, for example. Mm-hmm. They're not recognizing the risk for racial minorities. All women other than white have a chance of um, increased or increased risk of breast cancer in their 40s versus white women whose peak incidence is in the late 50s and early 60s. So this one size fits all is a significant barrier. And family doctors are being given this information. They're getting an overstatement of harms, an understatement of benefits from the task force. And so having a family doctor, it will present still a barrier if women are not informed. You have to be educated. You have to understand why mammograms are important. You have to be able to speak up for yourself. Many women are afraid if they speak up, they're going to lose their family doctor. But you have to be educated so that you have that empowerment and can advocate for yourself. Because when it comes to breast cancer screening in Canada, what you get for breast cancer screening, it's up to you. Your health is in your own hands. We have differences across the country. And in Ontario, we've seen great movement for women in Ontario. Good news is coming. They won't need to speak to their family doctor. They'll be able to self-refer for a mammogram starting at 40 in the fall, which is great. And for women with dense breasts, they're also able to speak to their doctor now about getting supplemental screening if they have the highest category of density. And what would that be? What would the supplemental screening be? Yeah. What does that entail? They have a they could have a choice. They could have MRI every two years with mammogram, or they can have ultrasound with mammogram. So this is something new that's just come out, and it will. it's not um, right across the board. Again, we don't have perfect equity here. Um, 
it will depend on capacity in your area. Mm -hmm. But you can speak to your doctor and get a requisition, and hopefully if there's capacity in your area, or go somewhere else and get that additional screening because we know that mammograms are not enough for women with dense breasts. Is an MRI more effective than an ultrasound? Yes, MRI is significantly more effective than ultrasound. Ultrasound will pick up an additional two to three cancers per thousand women that were missed on mammogram, and MRI can pick up 13 to 16 additional cancers per thousand women. Wow. MRI, you know, comes with its drawbacks as well. So each woman has to decide for themselves what they're comfortable with. But they should definitely have that discussion with their doctor because it's highly unlikely the doctor's going to bring it up because they don't discuss density for the most part with women with dense breasts. They they negate the importance of it. When you get a mammogram, though, it does come back now with your your density, which I thought was really impressive. It does. And you have to understand what that means. Yeah. Listen, uh, Jenny, where can people go if they want to find out more? Because uh, you're a great advocate, but if we're going to have to advocate for ourselves, I'm sure that you can help us navigate it through your website. Yes, thank you. Uh, densebreastcanada.ca and mybreastscreening.ca has tools to help you advocate and lots of information about why you should screen at 40 and why you need additional screening for dense breasts. Jenny, thanks very much. I wish you the best of luck as the fight continues, obviously. Oh, Not over thanks yet. Thanks so much, Kelly. Thanks. Appreciate it.